This 3D scanner can diagnose a faulty aircraft part without using destructive techniques. It's a game-changing bit of kit for the Royal Air Force. If we spot something, fatigue, issues within a component and prevent it being fitted to an aircraft, it could definitely prevent a uh, an air disaster in the future for sure. On the surface of it, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly wrong. Yes, I mean, I'm having a look now, but I'm no expert in this, but I can't see anything that's alarming at the minute. As we, we've scanned it, we found a fault which was actually causing the model aircraft engine to fail. Uh, there's, a, there's a crack right down the back edge. Could you actually point out where that is? Yes, yeah, so it's right along here, there's a, there's a crack within the component. That's just an example of how thorough this scanner is, but you've got to know how to use it, and that's where 71 Squadron from RAF Wittering come in. They're the first to be trained and qualified to British standards in non-destructive testing using the technology. Non-destructive testing became a thing due to a lot of aircraft crashing through the 50s and 60s and our understanding of uh, metals and the way they work and how they fatigue over time. Uh, that's why non-destructive testing has really been brought into service and uh, using this going forward hopefully will help assist in that. Close the door. Aside from model parts, let's see what it can do when testing newly made components that could be fitted to an aircraft. So this is a dog bone or test coupon printed off one of the machines. Uh, and this is basically to ensure that uh, the powder's been laid up correctly and it will be non-destructively tested in the XCT machine and destructively tested in a tensile pulling machine. I'll just pop it on the minute here now. That'll now do its thing, and I think it's 20 minutes for that scan. Uh, we'll be ready to move across to the analysis computer and check out what, what we've got. While this generates a report, it's straight on to another part, this time one on a larger scale, where its functionality is paramount to the survival of a pilot. This is a head box from a Hawk ejector seat. So this will sit on top of the ejector seat and there's a, the parachute uh, that comes out if the pilot were to eject, uh, the parachute comes out of here. And uh, I'll show you what we're looking at in a second. There's a bolt through the centre of the component that's packed in with the parachute. They want to check the orientation of that bolt to make sure it's, it's been fitted correctly, essentially. And this is realistically the best way to do it without dismantling everything and then putting it back together again. I'll move over to the conventional 2D radiography mode. We obviously have, we have the freedom to manipulate uh, the component whilst X-rays are on, which means we can uh, find the thing we're looking for without having to go in and out of the machine, which we would have to with our conventional 2D radiography method. You've seen how long that's taken, a process of a couple of minutes, and this is the component that we need to check here. Uh, so we, we can check the integrity of that component and uh, check that these uh, bolts are fitted in safety, and I can rotate this as a live image. To are you happy? Are they fitted safely? Uh, yes, on, on this component it is fit safely. This is the starting point. Uh, the people that have qualified to use this machine originally qualified in this method of radiography, the 2D method, and then we've progressed onto the 3D computer tomography method. In the background, a 35-page document has been prepared on the dog bone that was scanned earlier. There is a fair amount of porosity within this uh, test coupon which obviously isn't good, we want them to be perfectly solid. To summarise, this component needs more work. The porosity Corporal James Crampton mentions means it has too many air gaps in the metal, making it not structurally sound. But because of the scanner, it was caught well before leaving the building, so they can feed this back. Going forward, it could be used as a vital tool for the Air Force and ultimately could save lives. Kirsty Chambers, Forces News, RAF Wittering. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.